I'm going to demonstrate the proper technique for disposal of trash and sharps. First we'll start with the trash. Um, this is for any kind of paper items, um, um, like this if you wipe up the bench top. As long as it doesn't contain any chemicals or media, it can go in the trash. These little wave boats can be thrown in the trash as long as they don't have any chemicals on them, if you've washed them first. Um, um, any kind of paper can go in the trash. Um, containers that you've taken things out of um, can go in the trash as well. Plastic bags, um, any kind of boxes that don't contain any chemicals can go in the trash. As well as these little Moving on to the sharps. Um, this is kind of just a, a homemade sharps container, an old bleach container, or litter box containers that you've made into sharps containers. They need to be well labeled as sharps um, with the proper stickers on them. With these containers, you want to make sure you do not put any glass um, objects that could puncture the sides. Make sure you place, um, you do not place um, sharps um, like blades or needles in these containers. Only the red containers. Um, shown here, can you put those items. Now with the sharps containers here, you can put blades like this. And um, these little containers here, you can put in the trash as long as you make sure that the blade is not in there. Needles go in the sharps containers like these. Syringes, um, they can also go into the sharps container. The paper um, covering can go in the trash um, right after you open it. These sterilization indicators also need to go into the sharps container. They come out of the pipette holders here when you open them. Loops that you use. Once you take them out, this can go into the trash. Um, it's recommended that you don't put these into the, um, put these back into here and put them in the sharps container because it's bulky, it takes up more space, and really you just need to put what you've used um, under the hood that contains any material in there. Any kind of glass or plastic pipettes that may puncture a biohazard bag or may puncture um, this type of sharps container need to go into the larger sharps container. Here we have um, little capillary tubes, um, pipette tips, um, and like toothpick swipes. They all need um, to go into the sharps container. Any kind of syringes or um, filter. Filters need to go into the sharps containers. Any little glass tubes that may be used um, in the laboratory that may puncture bags need to go in the sharps. Um, any kind of cultures, culture wipes, um, Q-tips um, that you've used in a laboratory need to go into the sharps container. Test tubes, um, any kind of plastic pipetters or even glass pipetters like these need to go in the sharps. Any kind of spatulas that you use that may need to be thrown away need to go into the sharps. Um, any needles or um, sharp protruding, projecting items need to go into the sharps. This is a sterilization indicator. Um, syringes and needles, again. Um, slides, cover slips need to go into the sharps. And especially um, small pipette tips of any kind that can puncture biohazard bags, even if they're used for um, loading gels or anything that may, you may not consider to be biohazard, need to go into the sharps container. Um, and once you get these full, they need to be um, closed securely so that nothing comes out and properly labeled um, with an autoclave strip here to indicate when it's been autoclaved correctly. Um, an origin of waste so you can put your lab number there, um, what department you're in. And also on these containers, um, a biohazard label that indicates um, that they are sharps. I'm here to demonstrate the proper items that go in the biohazard bags. 
any kind of plastics, dishes that contain media or um, that even don't contain media, they need to go into the biohazard bags. Any gloves that have been used in the lab. Face mask. Any kind of tissues or paper towels that you've used to wipe up media or chemicals in the lab need to go in the biohazard. Eliza plates and wells can go in the biohazard. Any kind of centrifuge tubes, falcon tubes can go into the biohazard bags. Any media flask, cell culture dishes can go into the biohazard. And any kind of um, big plastic bottles that don't have any sharp edges, um, media bottles can go into the biohazard. It's important when you go to change out your bags, um, sometimes you'll get rips in them like this one. Um, if you do have any rips, tears, or any bags that contain media, you need to double bag those. Um, you can just loosely fit this down into another bag. And then to close this, you want to loosely take it like this and put um, either a rubber band or tape around the outside. What you do not want to do is put this bag up, tape it too tightly, or turn it over like this so that the bag does not have air. These will burst and blow up in the autoclave because the air cannot escape. So you want to loosely take this bag and then properly label it with an autoclave tape and a sticker of the origin of the waste where you put your lab number and the building to be autoclaved. This is a demonstration of broken glass and hard plastic materials and how they need to dis be disposed of properly. Anything that is hard, plastic, that is broken, cracked, this type of material, it's not um, biohazardous material, it's material that has been cleaned ahead of time and has either come back broken and you can't use it any longer. It can be disposed of in a heavy cardboard box. The box must be labeled appropriately with broken glass on it. These are other examples. Any type of glass material goes into the box. Any type of other broken glass that is clearly broken. And be, be careful when you're disposing of these materials. Broken beakers. Anything that is cracked doesn't necessarily have to be broken, but that is dangerous to use in the laboratory. This is a glass bottle that the lid has gotten frozen onto the bottle. It cannot be used if the lid can't be taken off. This does not go in trash. It goes in broken glass, even though it's not broken. <clears throat> light bulbs of any type. This is a fluorescent light bulb, but any regular light bulbs, anything of that nature, also goes in broken glass. The speaker is cracked, should not be used. And this came from, I guess, our break room upstairs. Now, once the glass container here is full, it should be closed up, sealed with tape so that it can't come apart, and then it can be disposed of as regular garbage. It can be go into the dumpster and be disposed of as regular trash once it's labeled and once you need to have it closed so that none of the glass particles can come out of the box. The final thing we have to demonstrate here is the disposal method when you bring your materials down to the um, washroom for autoclaving purposes. There's a sign-up sheet which indicates 
what kind of material you have, whether it's a biohaz bag or whether it's a sharps container. And you check the appropriate column, fill in your lab number, your name, and the approximate weight of your biohaz bag and how many of each item that you have. And it's logged in with all the appropriate information. Your biohaz bags, once they are appropriately labeled and sealed, should go into a plastic container to go into the autoclave. This is a safety measure just in case your bag should break and any liquid materials could possibly leak out. They will be contained. Your biohaz bags should be autoclaved for 40 minutes. It's a 40 minute liquid cycle. Any of these types of materials are always done on a liquid cycle so that the temperature rises slowly and drops slowly so that the containers are less likely to pop open or uh, rupture in the autoclave. Sharps containers, these are all various types of sharps containers. They're all labeled appropriately with your lab information and autoclave tape. They should be closed appropriately and sharps containers especially if you have any with screw caps do not screw the cap it's the same principle as with the biohaz bag don't seal the cap as tight as you can it can't breathe keep your cap just a little bit loose so that any air in the container can escape any of these sharps containers are autoclaved for 90 minutes it's a 90 minute cycle in the autoclave for any sharps contained.